Hey guys, what's going on? Welcome to another video. Uh, just to sort of address in the last um, video I did about the volume, it's a new headset and it's it's been a bit weird trying to set it up even just at all. So uh, I am trying to get the volume set up. Please let me know how it is in this video. Other than that, let's get into it. So in this video, we'll be talking about hardcore expeditions and what my thoughts are on it. Um, I'm actually running some hardcore expeditions in the background. Uh, doing anything between 5 and 10s, as you can see my gear is absolutely trash. Um, I'm just trying to power level holy up, so I've literally started today, uh, done sort of 4 or 5 hardcore expeditions, and I'm now at uh, 17 mastery, and like 9 or 10 spec. Um, so, not too bad, and it is going very quickly. Uh, and a lot of people have talked, asked me about hardcore expeditions, asked me what my opinion is, um, and in my opinion I think it's only a positive for the game. Um, so let's talk about the positives and negatives. First, the negatives. Uh, it does take people away from the world. It does take people from away from the outside world if they're going to be stuck in instance content. And I understand that, and I do, and that's not a good thing. However, what you have to imagine is there are a couple of different types of players that play hardcore expeditions. There's the GVG players that are just trying to fame up fast, which are going to be back in the black zone. They just need to fame up first. Um, like I did on my curse, where I was leveling him up in hardcore expeditions to take him out into the world uh, and just be stronger, effectively. Um, there's also people that love PvE. There's people that have come from games like WoW, they've had the Mythic Pluses, and they've really enjoyed this content that we're never going to venture too far into the PvP anyway. Um, and actually, them having the fame means that eventually they might get dragged into it where, they, where a guild goes, look, can you GVG for us? You're 100, 100 spec. And they go, well, actually, yeah, I am. I'll give it a go. So it actually could encourage more people to be involved in the PvP aspects of the game. Um, oddly enough, and it's not going to happen overnight. Uh, to talk about the positives of it, I think it gives more content into the game uh, for solo players as well because of things like the Hardcore Expeditions. Um, <clears throat> excuse me, things like that have, uh, the Hardcore Expedition Discord um, have made a great sort of influence onto the game. I'm in there every day, every other day um, trying to get a group going or, or to get something going at least and yeah, it, it's there's, it's a good community thing and actually that's that's been a positive force for the game. There are people in there like I said that only want to do Hardcore Expeditions there are people in there like myself, like Lupac, like a couple of other people that are there that are trying to boost GVG characters or trying to boost ganking characters or whatever. And ultimately, would they be able to do it as well in Hardcore Expeditions? And the answer is probably not. Now, another negative, unfortunately, with this is that you are very restricted on builds you can play. Um, so I'm actually going to kind of point a couple of things out in this group that I'm running with at the moment. So I'm running Holy and running this standard GVG Holy build. Uh, which I'm really lucky with because I can run literally the GVG build. Uh, looking at this fire, he has to run Blazing, he has to run Cleric, which no one really runs anymore, just because he, he needs the defensive and no one accepts fire really without the Blazing, because the Blazing is so strong. You then have the Demonic, which is in fairness almost useless in this situation, in, in a hardcore expedition. We are as good as carrying him, and that's not to say anything bad about him, that's to say that we are as good as carrying them because effectively he cannot compete with the damage of a Galatine or the utility of a Galatine or the damage of a Blazing. Um, but also looking at the tank, the tank has to play one hand hammer and caitiff because it is proven now that that's just the best combo that people have come up with. Uh, but he's also running knight armor because he wants to level that. But it's almost useless again for hardcore expeditions. Um, and, and this is it. Uh, it it kind of gives a whole new perspective on builds. I hope that they have some sort of balance for PvE and PvP with builds. I don't think it's a priority for them, but I do hope it's something that comes in the future because it would make a big difference to this community. Um, I honestly, so I've tried and completed an 11 fishy business. We did it with about six and a half minutes to spare. We did an amazing run on it. And quite frankly, wasn't difficult, got 45,000 fame just for the boss alone. So just for the last boss, we got 45,000 fame. From, this, uh, from the first boss, we got like 20,000 fame, and then from the whole run, we were getting 4k fame per mob, 
and about 1.8 for the smaller mobs. So we were getting so much fame, it was just ridiculous. And honestly, it might have got to the point, in fairness with that, that it's a little bit excessive. Even if there's 100 mobs in there, that's nearly 400k fame in that run, and you can clear all of the mobs in less than 30 minutes. Which is, literally, you cannot beat that fame per hour, really. Um, and this is the part that I'm, I disagree with, and this is not me saying I want hard crit specials and fame nerf. This is me saying we're at a point in the time now where if people like the rush of the game is over for now, um, no one's competing anymore to try and be the first person to 100 home respect to get GVG ready. If anything, it's just alts now and like rerolls. So buff the open world fame a bit, make the open world more competitive, and I think that could actually make things more exciting in, in overall as well. Um, I think 15s, 14s are going to be near impossible to complete, and if they are, they're running to be completed once with a lot of luck on your side. I think 13s and 12s are completable, and if people get their hands on them, they're going to be incredible, probably up to about 600k fame uh, a run. But then again, you have to think of it like this, is that how many maps have you seen at level 13 or level 12? And quite honestly, I've only seen one level 12 map in my time. I know other people have had them, but I've only seen one level 12 map that's actually completable. And this is the other thing, is that I've seen a couple of maps of level 11 Fistful of Silvers that people have just trashed. Uh, but I've never seen an actual like completable 12 or a completable 13. Because they're just very hard to get to that level. Um, so what this actually means is they're a one-off experience. And the sort of 6s to 10s that you just have on demand, they're all over the auction house are actually what people do end up farming. Uh, they do get a respectable amount of fame per hour, but nothing ridiculous. Which is what kind of balances it, in my opinion, is that you still need the open world to drop these maps, and then you still need the RNG of the maps to roll nicely every time to keep completing them. Even a level 8 Eternal Batter and 8 Fist of the Silver is impossible to complete um, by most groups. So it's not going to be like everybody's just going to be pushing every key to 10 and then they have to get RNG after that. They have to start getting RNG from like 7 or 8 for maps to be worth it. Uh, so this is a couple of different things with hard crit expeditions. I love the concept of them. But then again, from WoW, I was someone who loved the Mythic Plus idea. Um, honestly, remove the loot just completely from hard crit expeditions. It's pointless. It doesn't drop anything really good. Uh, the silver probably scales a little bit too highly at higher levels. I believe we got like 90k. Well, this is going nasty, Paul. Uh, I believe we got like 90k from the level 11 fist for the silver chest. Sorry, fishy business chest, which is maybe a little bit too high, honestly. Uh, if I had to be honest. Uh, but yeah, I, I I think that you could probably tune these a little bit better. But making massive changes, I don't know. I, I think I like the way it is currently. Uh, and yeah, I don't think there's too much else to say. I hope that they do some balancing with weapons to kind of make it fairer on different weapon choices. I mean, curse. I mean, basically at the top end at the moment, the only viable option is a holy healer, um, just because it puts out more bursty healing and tanks, and that's what you need in this. Um, a one-hand hammer tank with guardian armor, guardian helmet probably. Maybe Night Boots, maybe Hunter Shoes, uh, a Curse, Running Life Curse, and then two Blazings is literally like the strongest setup you can actually get at the moment. Um, and I think that's that's a little bit unfortunate that a lot of people that don't play those builds will not, not get to experience the higher tier maps, just because they're not viable. Um, but guys, tell me what you guys think of high group positions. I'm quite interested to see what the community thinks about them. I've had mixed reviews. People that have done hard crit expeditions and do them regularly, I've heard great things, of course, otherwise they wouldn't be doing them regularly. Um, but I've also heard really bad things from people that just don't want them in the game at all. Um, so like I said, guys, leave your feedback in the description. Let me know how the volume is in this video. Uh, I hope it's not too bad. And uh, yeah, I'm going to be doing a couple more videos in the next couple of days regarding Lancelot. They are, I've not forgotten, they are coming. Um, so yeah. Uh, look forward to them. Subscribe to the channel and catch you later, guys. Goodbye.